New developments today in the investigation into a Laurel County baby's death. Her parents now face murder charges, what police told us tonight. Our mental anxieties, I don't think that's ever going to leave us. Crews are now removing dirt contaminated with arsenic from a Montgomery County neighborhood. But people who live there say they still have many concerns. How a middle school volleyball team honored a Lexington police detective while trying to put cancer on the sidelines. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. It has been a while since we've seen any rain here in the bluegrass, but that could change over the next few days. And we could see some storms as well. We begin tonight with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey, and your no wait weather forecast. Chris? I think a lot of folks out there say bring on the storms if it's going to get rid of the heat, and that's going to be the case over the next few days. Still, late evening temperatures into the mid to upper 70s into many areas. And by the way, what you see now for late evening temperatures may wind up being some of the highs late this weekend. 76 right now. Lexington winds are coming at us from the south. How do we look heading into the day tomorrow? A lot like the day today. Near 90, though second half of the day we could fire up a thunderstorm or two. High pressure bringing the heat across the Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley, and much of the southeastern part of the country. Those some showers and thunderstorms getting as close by as parts of northern Indiana, Illinois, near St. Louis. Cold front is on the move as well. That front's going to make its way toward the southeast slowly over the next few days. So by tomorrow evening at this time, the scattering of showers and storms we see to our northwest will be right on top of central and eastern Kentucky. So we look at the weekend, and I've got changes coming up in the form of that cold front, guys. We'll track those changes and let them know what they mean for your Saturday and Sunday at 1113. Investigators believe a Laurel County couple injured their twin babies so badly one of them later died. And today, police upgraded charges in that case. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office has now charged Gary and Jessica Nicely with murder and criminal abuse. Police have said the Nicely's blame each other for the baby's injuries. New tonight, Garrett Weimer talked to investigators. It's our top story at 11. In the week since that seven week old baby died, deputies say they continued investigating and saw autopsy results that confirmed what they believed all along. These parents, uh, they, they needed to be brought to justice, and we've, we've done that. We brought them to justice. Jessica and Gary Nicely are now charged with murder, in addition to the criminal abuse charges they already faced. At a preliminary hearing last week, an investigator testified that the couple blamed each other for the abuse of the seven week old twins. And it's a very serious offense. Uh, we have a child that's deceased now. We have another child that has two uh, instances of broken bones that are in, in the healing process, so it's been abused as well. A very, very horrible case. It's a heartbreaking story, even for those who don't know them. Deputy Achardo says it's a difficult case for investigators. Most of our officers here have children or grandchildren uh, this age or younger, and uh, it's very heartbreaking for an officer to investigate something like this. It's, it's, it's tough, but you know we have a job to do, and, and uh, we've got these people uh, charged with the appropriate charges. Gary Nicely has been in the Laurel County Detention Center since he was arrested on August 30th. When deputies say the baby was first taken to the hospital, his wife was arrested two days later. Their bond is set for $100,000. In Laurel County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Police say the couple will be arraigned on the new charges on Friday. A preliminary hearing on the murder charge will follow next week. New tonight, Lexington firefighters are trying to figure out what caused a fire that damaged an apartment. The fire started about 8.30 tonight on Royalty Court off Waller Avenue. Firefighters say when they arrived, they saw smoke and flames coming out of a window of an apartment. They say it didn't take them long to put out the fire. They say the apartment has extensive fire and smoke damage. No injuries were reported. The building was evacuated, but firefighters say people in neighboring apartments should be able to return home tonight. Environmental crews began removing dirt contaminated with arsenic around some homes in Montgomery County today. The EPA announced last week that the arsenic had been found in dirt around Long Lane off of US 460. Investigators think it came from a business that used to be there. As Monique Blair tells us, health leaders are also taking extra precautions to make sure people living nearby are safe. 
For many families and for many years, Long Lane has been a place where fond memories were made. But as Joanne Ballard looks back on those memories, she worries her grandchildren were exposed to the arsenic long before anyone knew it was there. When she was out in the yard, in that garden, with her little runny nose and dirt getting in her little, it, it got into her system. It's believed the high levels of arsenic have been in the soil on Long Lane for decades. We just didn't know. We, we didn't have a clue what, what we were in on. For the next roughly six weeks, the contaminated soil on two homes at a time will be removed and replaced with clean soil. The Kentucky Department for Public Health, along with the Montgomery County Health Department, were out here today on Long Lane taking toenail samples from the roughly 70 people who live out here in an effort to try and determine what their exposure to arsenic has been over the past year. The Department for Public Health says toenail samples collect more heavy metal exposure than hair or blood. We have great uh, University of Kentucky researchers here with us, and so once they get all the numbers, they are going to provide us as well as the families some sort of description about what it could mean. But now Ballard says regardless of what the tests say and regardless of the new clean soil, the damage has already been done. Even if they do what they promise, living here may be better, but the impact and the devastation that we've already went through, our mental anxieties, I don't think that's ever going to leave us. In Montgomery County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Now, the Division of Waste Management has started to contact the parties they believe are responsible for the soil contamination. More charges have been filed against a Bourbon County teacher who's accused of harassing students. Investigators say more students have come forward making claims against Bourbon County middle school teacher Rick Massey. So he now faces 15 counts of harassment with physical contact. During today's hearing, the judge recused herself from the case, so a new judge will be appointed to it. And a special prosecutor is now working the case. Massey's attorney waived his arraignment. The next hearing is in November. New tonight, it appears swimmer Ryan Lochte will face a suspension for exaggerating claims that he and three other swimmers were robbed while in Brazil for the Olympics. Both USA Today and TMZ reporting the International Olympic Committee, the U.S. Olympic Committee, and USA Swimming will suspend Lochte from swimming events for 10 months. And he'll also be banned from the 2017 World Championship swimming meet. But none of those organizations would comment on the reports today. Lochte has been charged in Brazil with filing a false report. Tonight, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump taking part in the first joint candidate event of the general election. They appeared back to back in the Commander in Chief Forum in New York City. Many veterans and active service members were in the audience. Marley Hall has the latest from the campaign trail. Democrat Hillary Clinton was the first to field questions at a televised commander in chief forum on NBC News. One veteran asked about her email scandal. I communicated about classified material on a wholly separate system. I took it very seriously. The former Secretary of State said rock steadiness is the most important characteristic in a commander in chief. I view force as a last resort, not a first choice. Republican Donald Trump says his experience in business deals will help him lead. I have good judgment. I know what's going on. I, I've called so many of the shots. Trump was asked about accepting praise from Russian President Vladimir Putin. The fact that he calls me brilliant or whatever he calls me is going to have zero impact. The forum was held on board the decommissioned USS Intrepid. Both nominees were asked not to attack their opponent, but to focus on their own qualifications. Trump and Clinton vowed to defeat ISIS. We need to wage this war against ISIS from the air, on the ground, and online in cyberspace. I don't want to broadcast to the enemy exactly what my but plan is. Trump also said he'd consider letting an undocumented person who wants to serve in the military stay in the U.S. I could see myself working that out. Both nominees said more attention is needed for mental health care for veterans. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. Trump and Clinton will square off face to face in their first debate on September 26th. New tonight, a Lexington Middle School's volleyball team honoring a Lexington police officer who died of cancer. Detective Philip Harrison battled pancreatic cancer for months before dying earlier this year. 
His daughter, Maggie, plays volleyball for the Edith J. Hayes Middle School volleyball team. And tonight, the team hosted a sideline cancer night. Players and coaches and fans raised money for pancreatic cancer research. And the coach says the team wanted to do something special to remember Detective Harrison. But he was a great supporter of our program here. Um, so we wanted to not only remember him on one special night, but this whole season has kind of been a remembrance for him. The police department also donated special shirts for the team to wear for tonight's match. A disturbing discovery on an eastern Kentucky mountain. Police say someone killed three horses. What we've learned about the investigation in nine minutes. And then surveillance cameras were rolling when a Lexington homeowner says a man stole items right off his front porch. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. It's another muggy evening out there. We're getting ready to kind of uh, become a little more humid over the next few days. So the true steamy air is rolling into town over the next few days. But as we steam it up, we're going to storm it up as well. And then some cooler changes are on the way. Lots to talk about. Short time to do it in. Let's get after it. Here is a look at the temperature map across central and eastern Kentucky. Everybody into the 70s. Cool spot Danville at 70 degrees. Thermometers now compared to the same point last night are right on par just a degree or two above what we were talking about at the same point last night. Defender radar network nothing across the region now but I'll show you why that changes by this time tomorrow night and probably a little before that. High pressure across the Smoky Mountains right now giving us the heat and humidity across the bluegrass state. Thunderstorms ahead of our cold front beginning to fire up into parts of Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Chilly and cooler air coming in behind that. That's a nice little blast of September. That does not arrive tomorrow. We'll be near 90 before a late day shower thunderstorm knocks the temperatures down just a little bit. That starts out a period that will feature some storms on the move on Friday. Am I saying it's going to rain all the time on Friday? No, I am not saying that at all. But you're going to notice more humidity. And on Saturday, first half of the day should be in pretty good shape. Second half of the day, line of some booming thunderstorms will be on the move into central and eastern Kentucky. And that new hour by hour forecast is in, and it shows a hefty little line of thunderstorms on Saturday afternoon. Let's track it all as we break it down with each and every hour. Tomorrow at noon, already muggy middle 80 setting in. Afternoon, you're going to notice more clouds and a threat for a scattered thunderstorm or two that carries us into our Thursday evening. And you notice some scattered stuff into early Friday. I mentioned Friday is not going to be just a washout or a wall to wall day of rainfall. You'll get some of those scattered showers and thunderstorms to roll on in. High school football fans, hopefully, we get any storm in and out of town before the games kick off or after the games are finished. Now let's go into Saturday. Cold front is to our west. Most of us will start the day dry, but look what happens as we get toward the afternoon. Here comes that front on the move. That could be a potent little band of some thunderstorms that has uh, some gusty winds with it, and that'll knock the temperatures down. So as that front swings through here, look what happens behind it. Normally in September, we get these blasts of some typical September air. That's basically what this is. But given the fact that it is 90-ish for three or four or five days in a row, this is going to feel even cooler than what it normally would for this time of year. So we go from 90 again tomorrow into the 80s. I think we do spike it up ahead of that line of storms again on Saturday into the upper 80s. And then boom, 54 Sunday morning, 75 Sunday afternoon. Humidities are way down. Skies are blue by Sunday afternoon. And by Sunday night, guys, close to 50, if not a few upper 40s in the valleys. Now, we're talking. <laughs> you can almost say chilly for a couple of those mornings, right? That. that would be the first upper 40s we've had around here since back in the spring. Ooh. Okay. We're due, though. Yeah, we are. Thanks. A new survey has a revealing look at the job market in eastern Kentucky. What experts say can help those looking for work in eight minutes. New tonight, police in eastern Kentucky are looking for the people responsible for killing three horses. The Johnson County Sheriff's Office says the horses have been roaming with other horses as part of a pack. A man says he found the dead horses on a mountain in the Greasy community. Investigators say they had been shot. The man who found them says he can't understand why someone would want to hurt the horses. Whoever did do it, you know, they're still out there. Anybody that, in my mind and heart, that would shoot an animal like that for no purpose, probably harm human. And deputies have called in animal rescue groups to make sure the surviving horses in the pack are moved to a safe place. Investigators have not said if they have any suspects. 
State police plan to close some lanes of southbound Interstate 75 tomorrow morning as part of their investigation into a deadly crash. Police say 67 year old David McDowell of Louisville died August 28th when his motorcycle and a car collided around mile marker 85 in Madison County. Police say both vehicles were trying to avoid a previous crash. Tomorrow morning at 9, police say the left two lanes of I 75 South will be closed between mile markers 84 and 85 as part of the investigation. Police think the closure will last less than two hours. The former chairman of the Kentucky Retirement Systems Board wants to continue taking part in the board's meetings. Thomas Elliott made his case today in front of Franklin County Judge Philip Shepard. The governor issued an executive order earlier this year removing Elliott from that board. Elliott sued, and Judge Shepard ordered he be allowed to participate in the meetings. But the judge didn't like that Elliott later didn't show up for two meetings, so the governor filed a motion asking the judge to throw out his previous order. The judge said he hopes to have a ruling tomorrow. A Lexington homeowner says his surveillance camera caught a thief stealing items right off his front porch. He says a man took cushions off the and porch furniture. He says it appears a child helped him. The homeowner says by the time he realized what was going on, both the man and child had left with the cushions. It's frustrating to start with that someone would have the audacity to come up on your front porch and steal something that you have worked for. Well, he says the cushions cost about $200 each. Police haven't found the thief. They say generators and other equipment have been stolen from homes nearby, but uh, they don't think those thefts are connected. A new study of eastern Kentucky workers says the labor force there has declined by 20% during the past 10 years. The survey by Boyette Strategic Advisors and One East Kentucky says many people have stopped looking for work because of a lack of professional certification and the struggling coal industry are holding them back. Researchers say creating tax free zones and securing government contracts could help bring new jobs to eastern Kentucky. We have to still address accessibility, transportation, market access, and then cost of doing business here. I believe for the right companies, we can put a business case together and a value proposition for them to locate within our region. More than 500 workers and 200 employers in 27 eastern Kentucky counties were surveyed. Brian's up next, and a former EKU Colonel football star gets a chance to coach against them tomorrow. Yeah, my man Al Holland Jr., OVC Offensive Player of the Year with EKU. Now he's going to try and beat the Maroons. And the Cats calling a players only meeting already after the loss to Southern Miss. Any reason to worry? Sports is next. Following UK's disappointing come from a head loss to Southern Miss, UK players decided to get together for a players only meeting. Positive but intense was how it was described. A couple of players today saying defensive end Denzel Ware got everybody together just to clear the air and to say he had everybody's back. The Wildcats say it was needed as they get ready to head to Florida and play in the swamp. He just wanted to basically let us all know. Um, you know, he has our back and, uh, you know, we're all in this together. It's, it's not, you know, single efforts. It's a unit um, and, and that's what we have to do. We have to come stronger as a unit. You know, some, some people may have made some shortcomings here and there, but other than that, you know, we're all together as a unit and we got to go out there and we got to battle together. We needed that from our team leaders and we just need to get on the right page so we come out here this week and, uh, and prepare and have a good week versus Florida. Cats and Gators Saturday afternoon, 3.30. WKYT is the place to watch it. Immediately following, we will have a special edition of WKYT Game Time. Mark Stoops' post-game press conference live from the swamp. Former UK quarterback Bob Hardy died over the weekend in Florida. Hardy helped beat Tennessee in 1953, 54, and 55. And in that 53 game, it was the only time Bear Bryant beat the Vols while Kentucky's coach. Hardy suffered from Parkinson's disease. He was 83. It's a short week for EKU. They host Pikeville tomorrow night in the Colonel's home opener. EKU spotting Purdue 21 points before making a game of it up until the fourth quarter. Mark Elder says he had his players ready to go on the field today. You got to wait a whole week to get that terrible taste out of your mouth. Uh, so we're excited that we have an opportunity to play Thursday. 
uh, because we want to get that taste out of our mouth. We're hungry to play another game and show what we're capable of on Thursday night. Thursday night games, they're kind of tough, you know, just practicing on Sundays. You really don't get a chance to kind of recover. But, you know, uh, it's business. We got to come out there and play no matter the circumstances. Now, tomorrow's game with you, Pike at EKU, marks the first time former Colonels quarterback Al Holland Jr. will get to face his alma mater. Holland led the Maroons to back-to-back -back OVC crowns in 2007 and 2008. And for the guy formerly known as Biscuit, this will be a little strange. Oh, you know, there's going to be a lot of mixed emotions throughout it. And, uh, you know, going back and dressing in the visitor's locker room and coaching from the visitor's sideline, you know, and, you know, everybody booing you now as in everybody used to cheer for you. And, and, you know, we're trying to win OVC together. So, you know, it's going to be mixed emotions. It's going to be fun, but it's business for me. You know, I got to prepare my guys. I can't get caught up in the hype of it all. And uh, I got to get our guys prepared and be ready to play for 60 minutes and, and try to give us an opportunity to win a ball game. So how will little Al lead his 2-0 Bears into Roy Kidd Stadium tomorrow night? We will find out. It's a 7 o'clock kick from Roy Kidd Stadium. You can see it on the OVC Digital Network. Team USA World Cup of Hockey coach John Tortorella will not reverse his stance from his comments on Tuesday when he said he would bench players for not standing during the National Anthem. He said to ESPN, quote, if any of my players sit on the bench for the National Anthem, they will sit there the rest of the game. All of this started, as you know, when 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick chose to not stand during the playing of the National Anthem. We'll be right back. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is less than one minute away here on WKYT. And tonight's guests include Whoopi Goldberg. Mm -hmm. Whoopi. Whoopee, right? 90 degrees tomorrow, potentially. Yeah. Whoopee. Whoopee. No, no, I'm saying whoopee to Sunday at 75 Attaboy. degrees. Huh? Now we're talking. That's a fall feel. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, it could be a late day shower thunderstorm. Uh, better chance on Friday than again late Saturday. Fall you're, is coming. You're in such a good mood. Eventually. I, hey, it's he like saying whoopee. Just sort of let us right into it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to help out. You know. Thanks so much for joining us. We will see you back here tomorrow. Thank you.